Hey guys, it's Caroline, and I'm here to talk today about a rant <laughs> that has been brewing in me for a really long time. Um, and it starts with some behaviors and comments I see people making on LinkedIn, but the reason I wanted to talk about it with you today is that I think it actually indicates a larger challenge for people in their careers that really ends up holding them back. And so I think it's really important to, to shed some light on it here. So what's the behavior I see? The behavior I see is people will reach out to me directly through messaging, um, commenting on a post or commenting on a video or asking a question, which I love, by the way, I love that engagement. Uh, but they will preface that comment or question by saying, hey, I'm messaging you directly because I don't want my boss to know that I'm looking for a job, or I don't want my boss to know that I'm unhappy. And this, this is so disturbing to me, um, because number one, and this is the reason for the title, if your boss is on here on LinkedIn, chances are your boss is unhappy with her job too. Um, there is a percentage of people that are on here that are forward looking and you know just really trying to build up their content and networking for the sake of it and you know trying to be thought leaders. But the majority of people by far is people who are unhappy with their current job situation and looking to make a change in some way. And so the idea that first of all, if your boss is on here, they're spying on you is just slim to none, right? I mean, I guess it could happen, but we're so self-serving in general as humans. Um, most of the times we have our own agenda. We're not even paying attention to what other people do. Um, and we're, you know, so if your boss is on here, she's on here, most likely 99.9% .9 chance for her own reasons, nothing to do with you. Um, and secondly, and this is what I want to start talking about, I think there's a major assumption inherent in that idea that you want to hide something from your boss that is actually really, really destructive. And both you and your boss and people in general, those people around you, lose the benefit because of that assumption. So let me let me talk about it in micro terms as far as what I see on LinkedIn. Um, and we can talk about it in macro terms as well in terms of your career. So let's start with the micro and, and on LinkedIn, right? So again, I love the comments I get from everyone anywhere, right? So if you want to message me directly, go for it. That's cool. Keep it coming. It gives me feedback. I'm not on here to shout into the void and hear myself talk. I'm here to help you and engage. Um, but what it does is it robs the general population and the other people who are reading that post or watching that video. And, and this is just not my videos, by the way, this is everyone's, right? Um, it robs them of the opportunity to hear your unique perspective and to hear your comment and to think about, oh, wow, I saw the original poster's position and I agreed with them and now I see a different perspective. Now that makes me think a little bit. Um, or that's a great question, I had that too. And so when you do it privately, right, with just the original poster, you're basically robbing the general population who's also looking at that thing of your unique point of view in the world. And very practically, especially if you're looking to change careers or build up your portfolio or build up your online presence, right? That's an opportunity for you to position yourself as an expert or a, you know, thoughtful person or whatever whatever you're trying to create in your career. That's an opportunity to show other people who you are, right? I'll see that. The original poster will see that. But there's a whole lot of other people that are, you know, just kind of lurking and scanning stuff in the background that don't see that. And a lot of those could be potential recruiters or potential friends or potential hiring managers. Um, and so it's a real missed opportunity um, for you to hold back, especially, especially because, um, you know, of some probably made up story about your boss coming on here to spy on, spy on you or inadvertently seeing you make a comment. And and the other thing I'll add is unless you're making very pr provocative, um, kind of unconstructive comments, even if your boss were to see it, right? So if you made a comment on this networking video, what's your boss going to think? Oh, that person is networking. 
they're a savvy networker. <laughs> you know, I mean, they I, again, maybe the more nefarious thoughts could be uh, maybe they're looking for a job, um, which leads to the, the the broader macro discussion that I wanted to have, which is um, in your career, right? And again, based on these assumptions that your boss, you want to keep your boss in the dark of what you actually want in your career and what's making you unhappy and what would make you happier instead. In not sharing that with your boss, you really miss an opportunity for the two of you to work together on, on what you want to create. And I've seen it so many times, both with my clients and even before I became a coach, people really managing their careers. People negotiate sabbaticals. People negotiate um, exits from the company with a package. People negotiate part-time work arrangements, uh, negotiate... Um, uh, work, working remote situations. I have I have a client right now who negotiated a sabbatical, and I have a client right now who has twice um, negotiated working remotely from the rest of the team as she made geographical moves. And in the second, and it was I would say negotiation. It wasn't even a negotiation. She just asked for what she wanted, and the boss was like, "Sure." I mean, maybe it was a little bit more complex than that, but it wasn't this like heavy back and forth because my client knows what you know, instinctively, even though she was a little bit scared probably of having the conversation, her boss values her. And actually in the midst of all this, I think I might've mentioned this, she got a promotion and a raise, right? Several promotions and several raises. And I, I share that because a lot of times people think that in asking for what they want um, and asking for these flexible arrangements or asking for something to change a little bit, they feel like they're going to be punished for it. Right, there's think there's going to be some punitive outcome, and it's so not true. Of course, it can happen, and part of that is knowing the right way to approach your boss and doing a really good job in the first place, so you have a lot of capital. Um, but even even if you're not, well, let me not even go there. But you have to understand that the motivation of most bosses. I'm speaking in generalities here, but most bosses, it's in their best interest. You're already in the position. You already know what you're doing. Chances are, if you're watching this, you care about your work and you are just wired to add value and be, um, what's the word, conscientious about your work, right? And so to just, just voice your concern to your boss um, is really, really important. Um, and I'll say in my own uh, example of my career, I negotiated so many things and I think probably, maybe not every single time, but most times I would go to my boss with what I thought was a win-win opportunity, what I wanted and you know, kind of how we could make it to work to benefit them and or the organization. And they actually kind of raised me, right? So they, they even sweetened the deal in a way or came up with a different way to approach it that ended up actually being better. And again, had I kept all of that in my head and exited the company or been disgruntled or whatever, I not only would have not gotten the thing that I actually wanted, but in sharing it with my boss, they often came up with a better solution. Um, and so I really want you to change the energy behind this. Your boss doesn't need to be the, en the, the enemy. Um, and oftentimes we make our boss the enemy even when they're not actually the enemy. And if your boss is truly the enemy, then you need to exit and that's a whole other conversation. Um, but I, I think the first step is to really challenge your assumptions you're making about, you know, if you go with a well thought out proposal of what you want and how everyone can actually benefit from that, it's a win-win, right? And the worst that can happen is, is a conversation and it, it doesn't end up happening. But they're not gonna, there's oftentimes no retribution for it. Um, and if you have concerns about that, let me know. There are obviously always specific cases. Um, so one quick story I wanted to share with you, um, and this was a case that makes me sad today. Um, I had a, an employee exit, uh, she left, um, out of protest about something. I didn't know at the time what she was actually upset about. I remember in the discussion just like feeling the anger from her. She was very upset about it um, and she kind of gave me her reasons. They didn't really make sense to me at the time. They didn't feel right. But I, I went on what she you know, was telling me and you know, made counter offers. She wasn't gonna do it. So you, know, you, you gotta let them leave. I found out years later um, from another coworker, why she actually left, and she was really, really upset about a certain decision I'd made, and um, it's it made me so sad to hear that. Number one, because I was like, oh, well, what is it about me that you know I wasn't a 
approachable enough or she didn't feel comfortable enough sharing that with me, the real reason. Um, but also made me so sad because it was such a solvable problem, right? And I had grand plans for her that would have given her everything she wanted and more. Um, but because I didn't know what was actually really going on with her, I, I couldn't explain that to her because I, I didn't know what was really behind it. So I think that's, that's kind of a sad example of where we, we all lost out, right? The organization lost out because she left. I lost out because she was a stellar team member. And I think she lost out, even if she decided to take that other opportunity, um, she at least lost out on telling me how she was feeling about the thing, hearing my response to it and being able to weigh it against this other offer. So in closing, I really, really, so bring it back to LinkedIn, share your thoughts, share your comments, challenge the stories that you are making up in your head about, you know, what your boss is thinking about your career or how they don't want your success. Flip it into a more energizing kind of collaborative approach. Your, your boss has your best interest in heart at heart and is probably willing to at least have a conversation about what will make you happy in your career. You owe it to yourself for them. Uh, you owe it to yourself to do that. And think of how it can benefit those around you, whether it's on LinkedIn or on your team, right? Um, you have amazing gifts to offer that literally no one else can. And I just want you to share those with others. All right, so leave your questions and comments below and I look forward to hearing your feedback. Hopefully in the comments, not directly, but I'm, I'm happy either way to get them. Anyway, I'll talk to you soon, bye.